Hello everyone and welcome to another video. If you ever catch yourself writing 0 over 0 as part of the solution of a math problem, you want to take a break because that's a sin, it is not allowed, it is indeterminate and it has six children that you want to avoid also. So, in this video I'm going to show you the kind of math expressions you cannot write, the kind of answers you cannot get, they're not allowed because they are called the deadly sins of mathematics. Always indeterminate. Let's get into the video. So let's start with the first sin, the most common sin. It is getting zero over zero. And I want to explain to you why this is indeterminate and is unreasonable. Let's look at this. You see, if I have um, 2 times 3, I'm going to get 6. So if I want my 2 back, all I have to do is divide both sides by 3. So I can say my 2 is equal to 6 divided by 3. I've got my 2 back, right? Now. Whatever number I use, as long as I just follow the simple law of multiplication, I'll always get my number back. But let's say I have 2 times 0. My answer is going to be 0. Now I want my 2 back, so I'm going to say 2 equals 0 divided by 0. Yeah, obviously you can see, well, let's even say that's true. What if the number is not 2? What if the number was 5 times 0 gives me 0? I want my 5 back. My 5 is going to be 0 divided by 0. Okay, so you see, I can make anything up. You cannot determine what 0 over 0 is because it can be anything you want it to be. And that's the meaning of indeterminate. Okay, it doesn't make any sense. You cannot determine what 0 over 0 is. So it's not the answer to a math problem. It is not a number. It is nothing. It is not small. It is not large. It's nothing. It's not even nothing. It's indeterminate. So you see, 0 over 0 is the mother of all the other indeterminate forms. And that's what I'm going to do now, that you have understood why we don't get 0 over 0 as an answer. So now, let's go to the second one. So sin number 1, 0 over 0 is indeterminate. And that's how you describe it. This is indeterminate. And so are the six children that 0 over 0 has. And then you're going to see how this is going to help you in some topics. Maybe when you do calculus, you can figure out, okay, that's not my answer. I have to do something else. Okay, now let's go to the second one, sin number 2. So for the second sin that you must avoid, let's say you have 0 over 0 and you try to be fancy with 0 over 0, okay? And I say, I'm just going to multiply this 0 by 1, multiply this 2 by 1. So in math, when you multiply something, well, again, multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything, but usually we multiply the top and bottom by 1. Well, we know that 0 times, um, zero times 1 will be equal to 0, and 0 times 1 equals 0. But what if I rewrite this? Okay, say I remove this because 0 times 1 is 0, but I have 0 times 1 up here, but I write it this way. 0 times 1 divided by 0 is still the same thing as I had originally. Okay, this was not necessary. So look at that. I have not changed anything because 0 times 1 is 0 divided by 0. Right? What if I write this as 0 times 1 over 0? Have I changed anything? No because this is still 0 times 1 divided by 0, simple fraction problems, okay? Remember that 2 times 3 divided by 6 is the same thing as 2 times 3 over 6. You still get the same answer, okay? It's still 1, okay, whatever you do. So in this case, what do I have here? Well, I have 0 multiplied by what is 1 over 0. Well, you know that, that whenever you divide a number by 0, you get infinity. So that goes to infinity. So this is an indeterminate form. You're not allowed to write that in math. It's not an answer because it's one of the children of 0 over 0. So that is sin number 2. 0 multiplied by infinity is indeterminate. Let's add it to the list. 0 
times infinity is indeterminate, the same thing. Let's go to sin number three. So I'm going to go to the third one using this um, simple expression here, which is indeterminate in itself. But I want to show you something. Let's say I write um, two times three. Two times three is six. But what if I don't want to write two, I want to write one half instead. Okay, how would I write one half so that my answer will still be six? Well, I'm going to write one half times three, but this is not six. The only way to get this to be two is to take the reciprocal of one half because the reciprocal of one half is two. So I just took the reciprocal of this number and this still gives me six. So the same thing, I don't want to change this to be zero. So what I'm just going to do is write it as one over zero times infinity, but I've changed this to one over zero. In order to restore it to zero back, I have to take the reciprocal. Now the reciprocal of one over zero is basically one over infinity times infinity, which gives me infinity over infinity. And that is sin number three. This is not allowed. You cannot divide infinity by infinity. So now that we have um, infinity divided by infinity, not an acceptable thing to do, you want to wonder, so what will be the next thing that's going to show up? Okay, another sin you want to avoid will come from either this or this. But I just want to show you, let's say you have um, 0 over 0. Let's just take 0 over 0, for example. So we have 0 over 0. And I can decide to write 0 on top as... 1 minus 1 over 0. And remember that based on your simple algebra laws that you know, um, I can separate these two into 1 over 0 minus 1 over 0. Because they have a common denominator, what is 1 over 0 actually? Well, that's infinity. And what is 1 over 0? Well, that's infinity. But you cannot subtract infinity from infinity because it's one of the children of 0 over 0. So we're going to go back and add that to the list. You cannot do this. Zero, infinity minus infinity is also indeterminate. Okay? So, because you cannot subtract infinity from infinity. Just guess what? What if this was a plus? Then this would have been 1 over 0, and this would have been 2 over 0. You would have gotten infinity. So you can add infinity, but you can subtract infinity from infinity. Now let's go to number 5. So let's go back to infinity over infinity and see what can come out of it. Okay, so now remember that we could write this as infinity to the first power divided by infinity to the first power because anything raised to the first power is itself. One to the first power is one, zero to the first power is one, is zero, <laughs> two to the first power is two, um, anything to the first power is itself, including zero. That's including infinity. Infinity to the first power is infinity. Now remember that law of exponent. We say that whenever you are subtracting, when you're sub dividing and it's the same base, you just have to subtract the exponent. So it's going to be 1 minus 1. And that gives us infinity to 0. So as you can see, it was infinity over infinity that became infinity to 0. And that's another indeterminate form. Indeterminate. Okay, it looks like we've explored everything except these two. See, what happened to infinity over infinity will also happen to zero over zero. Okay, as you can see, we could as well say zero over zero is the same thing as zero to the first over zero to the first, which is the same thing as zero raised to, to the one minus one, which is zero to the zeroth power. So you cannot raise zero to the zeroth power because it still falls under the um, indeterminate form. So we have to do that also. Zero to the zeroth power is also indeterminate. And now the final one is going to blow your mind <laughs> okay now let's look at it now this is the final one one to infinity 
Yeah, I know what you're thinking. One times one times one times one forever should give you one. But well, no. Uh, may? No. So one times one times one times one times one will give you one. But when you see an, a term like this, an expression like this, one to the infinity power, what you're saying is that it's going to be one, but the answer is no. It's not equal to one. It is indeterminate. And I'm going to explain. So, I want you to consider this situation where you know you have one and you're multiplying one by itself. One times 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 one. It's going to be one. But this expression, how do you know this was one originally? Remember that you can obtain one by just dividing anything by itself. Just imagine this. Let's say I give you 2 to the third divided by 2 to the third. This is supposed to give you 8 divided by 8, which gives you 1. That is simple um, algebra or pre-algebra, whatever we call it. But what if I decide to apply one of the laws of exponents and I put these two together because the law of exponents says when the exponents are the same, I can put the two bases together and just give it a common exponent. This is one law of exponent that we can apply. Now look at this. What is 2 divided by 2? It's going to give me 1. And 1 to the third power gives me 1. Beautiful. Beautiful. So you see that I can actually do this and I will get the same answer when I'm dealing with finite numbers. Because my exponent is not a finite number, Let's try and do something like that. I'm going to change the 3 to infinity and see what's going to happen. So let's change this to infinity. Now tell me, what is 2 to infinity? 2 raised to power infinity. Well, that's going to be infinity. You see that? Let's, let's get rid of that. That's going to be infinity. What is 2 to infinity? The bottom one also is going to be infinity. Well, is infinity over infinity equal to 1? No, because it is indeterminate. So we can't do that. But let's say I didn't want you to know that's what I did. I decided to apply that rule where I put these two together and I change this power to infinity. Then I'm going to get this. And then I'm going to get 1. But this is not true. So we cannot do this because of the indeterminate form. That's why this is regarded as indeterminate. There is only a situation in which you're going to get a 1, and there's a situation where you're not going to get a 1. So just to clear things up, there are two cases in which you will not have an indeterminate form. And that's not when you're evaluating 1 to infinity, but when you're taking a limit to infinity. Okay, so look at a case like this. I want you to tell me what happens if I keep multiplying 1 by itself an infinite number of times, but this is how I'm going to write it because infinity is not a number, okay? So we're going to say it's the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 to the power of x. This simply means you're multiplying 1 by itself. As you approach infinity, what do you think your answer is going to be? This is the case where you get a 1. This is how it is presented. Okay, it is the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 to the x, which is equal to 1 all the time. And the second case is going to give you a completely different answer. Okay, consider this situation where you want, you want to take the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over x raised to power x. You will notice that as x goes to infinity, this fraction goes to 0. So you're doing 1 plus 0 raised to power infinity, which is going to give you 1 to the infinity, but surprisingly, you don't get 1, you don't get indeterminate, you actually get a constant that is very useful in everyday life, and it's called the Euler's constant, and it is E. I'm sure you've seen E before. Okay, so this is the definition of E, and this is approximately 2.78, like that, just some number around that area. So remember that this in itself is indeterminate, this is determinate, it is 1, this is determinate, it is e, and those are the two special cases that you have. But generally, you're not allowed to write 1 to the infinity as a value 
it is indeterminate because it could have been created by anything just as zero over zero could be the result of anything so let's go to the final one one to the infinity is indeterminate if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up share it tell your friends about it leave a comment in the comment section and never stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.